What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Eric, the one, the only Bay Area Collector, and today I continue my series of how I got my consoles. We are doing part three, which is the fifth generation of consoles, and the stories get really, really interesting about right now regarding these particular consoles. Um, Back in the days, the main consoles at that time in the fifth generation were consoles such as the PlayStation 1, Saturn, Nintendo 64, all those consoles that revo revolutionized the, the new era, what I call the new era of gaming. Um, we, we are now gone from the 2D um, graphics to 3D, you know, polygon style graphics and as well as some of those really cool 2D style games and whatnot, but this is like one of my all-time favorite eras of gaming without a doubt and not only that um, the consoles and the stories behind these consoles that I own currently right now they have some interesting stories some you guys already heard but I'm gonna go ahead and reiterate but let's begin first console that that was the main one of that era the fifth generation is of course the PlayStation 1 now I own the original fat PS1 that came out but I also own this one so I own two PS1's in total and this console came out back in um, in nine, nine, sorry September 9th 1995 and um, I remember this was all the craze I remember that it was between it was between the it was between the Sega Saturn and this one but obviously at that time I chose I chose PlayStation 1 at first though an interesting story. Well, the original PS1 Fat, um, I actually um, still own it to this day. The very original first one that I owned. I've only owned two, that one and this one. Um, and that one, I, uh, you know, I kept it for many years. But this one is interesting. So um, back when I lived in San Diego, and um, and me and my ex-wife moved into our first um, apartment um, building that we were gonna manage. The former owners of the apartment that were the on-site managers of that particular place left behind a couple of things, and one of those things was this console. And I'm all like telling my ex-wife at the time, I'm like. Man, do they do they want it? Do they um do they want it? And eventually they kind of forgot about it and they say they didn't care about it. So I ended up keeping it. Um and then of course I bought the I bought the PS1 um screen for it because this is considered to be the slim model. Um moving on further down the line, I gave my original PS1 fat to my friend. Um the same one you're about to hear um in in, in the next story. Um, and he um, decided then I give it to him kept it for a few years and then um, about two years ago say a year and a half like not a little while ago he told me he still had the PS1 and he said do I want it do I want it back he's like he couldn't really get into it and he's like whatever so he gave me back the console and and so to this day that console sits at my parents so it's kind of like one of those consoles that um, that I keep at home over there and then at my parents home and then I keep home at home I keep this one here on top of that I own two PS1 um, the the minis um, I bought one at regular price and then another one I bought it at a really cheap price and I own two of them as well so all in all very very good console um, very first game I bought for this one was not Crash Bandicoot it was actually Discworld um, and for all of you guys who know what Discworld is, at the time when I bought it, it used to be a very cheap game, and now it's a very, um, it's worth a lot of money, and it's basically a point-and-click adventure. Um, the voice actors of that particular game were um, people who came out in Mon Monty Python's, you know, Flying Circus, and from England, um, from the UK, and it's a very well-known, um, you know, they're very well-known. Um, not familiar familiar but I watch a couple of Monty Python movies and whatnot so I'm familiar familiar with the work but the in the game was actually pretty cool unfortunately never passed it and I wish now that I'm looking for it it's expensive but for this console is the one that I own probably my most expensive video game collection um, and of course if you guys dig in through the videos going back you'll see a video that I made 
um, where I got so lucky at a flea market that I uh, to the I got so lucky at a buy that I got at the flea market one day where I bought 20 games for $20 for the PS1 and a lot of those games were very expensive games um, one of them being um, such as like Tactics, Ogre, um, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night got all those games um, pretty much most of them were complete and of course the games like Tactics Ogre at the time used to be worth more than a hundred dollars in itself so um, but not only that that's when I got really smart with games and I kept most of my old collection from when I bought it with the exception of a couple that I regret not keeping I did burn this and kept the original artwork for them but I did not keep the original game and I kicked myself in the butt for that but in the most part, my one of my most expensive video game collection is, is the PlayStation 1. So yes, one of my favorite all-time consoles without a doubt. Um, the next console, um, this one, I did a story, sorry guys, I did a story not long ago regarding this particular console. And, and the, I'll, I'll try to slim it down due to the time, you know, to make this video go quicker. And that next console, of course, is the Sega Saturn. Um, the Sega Saturn came out back in um, in if, if, sorry in and I can't even talk came out in May 11th of 1995 came out a little bit before the PS1 and um, literally um, when I was going to high school these consoles well all of these consoles that I'm about to talk about were like the talk of the town um, and they're all great consoles in its own. Um, now, the very first game I had for the Sega Saturn was Virtual Cop. Really fun game. It's super cheap right now, but I haven't gotten it, and I should get it. But um, pretty much right now, nowadays, the, the video game market for the Saturn, the games are super, super expensive. Unless you buy Japanese, um, which I have this, and I have a card that I can play. That newer version of the card, I have it as well. Um, but yeah, and... Um, the story behind the Saturn was, and I and I did a video about it not long ago, probably like around last year, because that's when I acquired this console back. So originally, I had bought a Sega a Sega Saturn. Um, I sold it, and then I purchased I purchased it again soon after. Um, over the years, I had it. I had to move. Well, actually, I moved and I kept it, and then eventually, I sold it to um, my ex brother in law. Um, I had sold the console to him. Um, years, and, and so he kept it, you know, I needed the money at the time, um, did it down in San Diego where I, where I used to live for a while, and then, um, fast forward to about last year, so my friend, the same friend who gave me my, the, my PS1 back, he actually bought the console off of my ex-brother-in-law, because he wanted to buy it for his son, and he wanted to play it, and then eventually he, he, lost interested in it rather quickly and he sold it he sold it to me um at first he had it he got it he was cool with it and then you know i said well yeah i really because i really wanted the saturn back and this is a console that i miss so much um i have some really cool games for it and and i gotta say i think that some of my video game collection for this um for this particular console is rather expensive because I got a couple of original games that are worth, you know, Saturn games are worth a lot of money. Um, one of the games that I had for the Saturn a long time ago was um, Magic Knight Ray Earth and that to me is one of the most um, memorable, funnest, and cherished games that I've ever played um, ever. And it was in the Saturn and now that game is worth about a thousand dollars at least. And um, to this day, it's a game that if I ever see it, I own it Japanese. Um, I could play it in English. I own a, a copy of it in Japanese, um, which they're very similar. But of course, the the English version came out in um, came out at, from a working. It was a working design release, and so of course that's going to be worth a lot of money. But yeah. Um, if you guys really want to get more deeper into the story, you guys can watch the video. It's, it's um, you know, it's a few videos back, but yeah. Really, really cool console that I'll never get rid of again. And I'm glad to own it, and I'm glad that I got all the games back for it. Because uh, I guess um, um, my ex-brother and I pretty much kept everything. Um, pretty much kept all the games, and, and I got them almost all back. And then finally... The last console, um, and I also did a video for this one, is the Nintendo 64. Um, 
Okay, a Nintendo 64. This is a very interesting console because I owned a Nintendo 64 many years ago when it, not around where it came out, but before I get to the story, I forgot release date for this console was September 26th of 1996. It came out a little bit bef a little bit after the PlayStation 1. Um, and then the first game that I owned was Yoshi's Story for it. Um, I believe I want to say I bought my original Nintendo 64. I bought it at Funko Land. Um, I'm not sure, but then eventually I got rid of it because I only had a few games for it and I lost interest in it. And then um, I know that I did a, 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 a video of, of my collection of this console so far. And, um, and um, fast forward to like around 2014, 2015. Um, one of my co-workers, um, well, early, okay, where I work at, earlier in the morning I was taking out some trash. And in the trash room I saw this console with a ton of games sitting in, on, on top of the recycling bin. Um, I saw it and I'm like, ooh, uh, that, that was around the time where I was getting a little bit into collecting console, into collecting games, but not quite all there. And then, you know, I saw it and let it, I let it be. A couple of days later, um, I was talking to one of one of the maintenance guys, um, and and we were talking, and all of a sudden, I, I told him, "Well, I saw this console, this Nintendo 64 console, on top of the recycling bin." And then he saw like, "Oh no, no, check it out! I I pulled it out of the recycling bin and I took it home because I wanted to let my little kid play. He had a three-year-old kid at the time, um, and and he wanted to save it for him." So then I'm all like, okay, you know, cool. And I was thinking, man, I want to get it. So then what, what I did, I talked to him. And I said, hey, how much would you sell me the console? I said, I told him, I know you got it for free. I know you pulled it out of the trash. But at the same time, um, you did the dirty work, quote unquote. And how much you want for it. And he told me, well, I don't know. And I told him, you want 50 bucks for the whole thing? And he gave me, sold me the whole the whole set for 50 bucks. I know it was in the trash. I should have picked it up. But, you know, we have these things, you know, at work where we can't really, it's kind of like dumpster diving and you kind of don't want to do that. So, but yeah, picked it up, cleaned it up. And to this day, um, my collection is growing bigger for this console. Um, and this is probably, so right now, as you guys know, I'm, I'm aiming on collecting all the Wii U re US release games. Um, for the Wii U and my next the next two consoles I want to collect for entirely are the Sega Master System and the and the Nintendo 64 so I want to I want to aim in collecting all the games for that console um, but yeah um, really interesting story and that's the story of these fifth generation consoles um, pretty much one of the most funnest the most memorable you guys don't know the memories I had playing you know certain games especially for the ps1 and the saturn if i play a couple of games i get very nostalgic because it brings me back to that era to that time and i kind of remember what i was doing at the time it's kind of like a memory into the past and and all those fun memories that i had it was right around high school um going into college where it was really really fun for me um very, very memorable times, good times, and so forever this particular um, generation of consoles will always be the one, the one generation that I have the most nostalgic um, over. Um, the next gen consoles, there's, there's going to be a, you know, the next generation coming up, there's going to be some cool stories behind those two, um, but yeah, um, this is probably... One of the most, aside from the Nintendo and the classics as being a kid, this this collection of consoles, um, the these right here, these three consoles, the Saturn, the Saturn, the PS One, and the and the and the Nintendo sixty four are pr probably the most memorable times when I was a teenager going on to adulthood, into college, and um, very fun times. Never will will I forget. As long as I have these consoles. To me, collecting video games is not really of collecting, but it's remembering times. If I see a game or buy a game, is I remember pretty much that that time frame, and it's kind of like a way to help me with my memories. You know, now, we're not getting any younger; we're getting older, and um, and yeah, I want to make sure that 
I preserve my memories. But anyways, um, this has been Eric the Bear Collector. I think I'm going to be coming up with the next generation console. Um, the next set of consoles because there's a lot more to cover. Probably make another video soon. Um, my daughter's birthday is coming up this um, real soon. So I want to try to make a special, try to beat a game and, and make a special um, game and, and honoring her first birthday. Um, so I want to I want to do that and hopefully see if I get through with it. It's not a hopefully it's it's it'll be done. But anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And this is Eric, the one and only bear collector. Peace out.